that birdie picture. Too bad we got to spoil it. to me as usual. Henry Liddell, Esquire. <laughs> Ain't bad enough he's got to ruin me. You got to be elegant about it. Hmm. What's happening to Morrison and Liddell? Can it be that they're not doing so well? Unless things go from bad to worse, they better catch me who wrote this verse. Black Bart might just well be signed with the California Central Railroad. They hire him. Hmm. P.S. To be sung to the tune of Listen to the Mockingbird. And that ain't all. Just listen to this here. Here's one from Mark Benton, the president of the railroad. Too bad he can't write poetry, too. Dear Mr. Liddell, I'm coming soon to Nevada City and hope we can get together to confer in peace and friendship. The only way I'll confer with that varmint is over a gun. Well, maybe Mark Benton means it, Hank. We haven't any proof the railroad's been back in Black Bart. Well, we got common sense, ain't we? At least I have. All Black Bart wants is money. Why would he be burning the property unless someone was paying him? And who's paying him but Mark Benton? You stick to driving your coast, Jeff Connor, and leave the pigrin to me, will you? Hello, Bart. Hello, Norton. <laughs> now, don't tell me you got those clothes in Nevada City. What's wrong with them? Salesman said they were the latest style. Well, they're fine, fine. You didn't get me down here to talk about my clothes, did you? No, indeed. I've got much more on my mind than that. You've been doing a good job breaking Morrison and Liddell. You bet your sweet life I have. But that stage line company is only a link in the chain. Those mines up there in the Sierras are booming. And this company intends to handle that traffic all the way from the mountains to the sea. We're after Mark Benton's California Central Railroad, too. But Benton's a tough customer. And he gets tougher with every mile of track he lays. He isn't so tough. He's been having financial difficulties. And once he gets in construction difficulties as well... And I suppose that's where I come in. You and Hank Liddell Stage Line Company. You're going to join forces to break the railroad. Liddell and me? He'd as soon join forces with a rattlesnake. If he knows who you are. But he won't. Oh. Well, with me handling it, it might work. And if I know Mark Benton, he'll fight back. <laughs> of course he will. There's no law up there worth the name. And once they're started, Nothing can keep those two from clawing each other to pieces. Then you'll pick up the pieces, huh? Both pieces. Here's to Mark Benton and Hank Liddell. Long may they fight. Says here, California Central laid four and a half miles of track last week. Track? Yeah. With horses, you don't need any track. If that old railroad was good at all, it wouldn't have to be burning our stages. You tell them, Chick. Now you're talking just like your daddy used to. If my daddy was alive, the railroad wouldn't be getting away with it. But I ain't worrying. You'll do something. Daddy used to say you was one of the handiest fellers he ever saw. Well, the trouble is, I'm not so sure the railroad's the one that's been plaguing us. We haven't caught a one of their men holding us up. And here, Mark Benton is going to Nevada City on an inspection trip. Inspection. Hey. Others do the work, and he does inspect it. I bet he wears a clean shirt every day. <laughs> no, and him a grown man. When I get big enough so my sis can't run me, I ain't gonna wear a shirt at all. Don't forget, Chick, you're the Morrison of Morrison and Liddell. When you grow up, you're gonna have to dress the part. Why, you might even have to wear two clean shirts every day. Huh? <laughs> I'm gonna make you general manager, so if I have to dress up, you will too. 
Wait a second. You're going to have yourself a lame horse. I reckon I don't need anybody to tell me that. Suit yourself. But I've got a blacksmith car yonder. And to prove to you that I'm a good loser, I'll fit this horse a new shoe. Fit a shoe? What does a railroad man know about fitting a shoe? That depends on the railroad man. What do you need a forge on the railroad for, anyway? We've got a lot of tools to keep in shape. Besides, I started out as a blacksmith. And I don't like to see horses go lame. You seem to be mighty worried about this horse. What you driving at? Well, if it's the shoe, I'll tell you. Come on over to the car. Don't you do it, Jeff. He's up to something. I think I can risk it. Lead the way, mister. Yeah, and I'll be covering you, too. And I'll keep my eyes on that engine cool in case you fellas start anything. Now, oh, gonna Jeff ain't got no more caution than a blue-eyed mule. This forge is always ready. That's why we're laying almost a mile of track a day. Of course, it'll be slower once we start through the mountains. You're not figuring on going through the mountains, are you? Why not? Well, I just proved to you that this train can't even outrun a good team on the level. You're pretty proud of that, aren't you? Then let me ask you a question. Your horses just ran a race. Are they ready right now to run another one? Of course not, not until they catch their breath. That locomotive up yonder don't even know that it's been in a race. It could race all day and all night and not even need a breather. Your horses can't compete, young fellow. Is that what you wanted to tell me? That's part of it. Mr. Liddell won't even answer my letters. I thought maybe if I could get you to see things my way, you might be able to persuade him to listen. Not with all this burning and robbing. He figures you're out to break us, but back in black bark. Why should I want to break you? The railroad has to stick to its tracks. Your job is to bring the freight to and from the railroad. The more we cooperate, the faster our business in the country will grow. Then you're claiming the railroad hasn't been robbing us. I give you my word on it. I don't know any more about Black Bart than you do. All right. I'll tell Liddell that. And she. Now, I'll see if I've lost my touch. Here comes number six, Magda. And on time. Well, 
burn my britches if that fool gal ain't driving again. Hi, sis. Hi, chick. Thanks. Hello, Uncle Hank. Hello, Jeff. We left nine minutes late and made the round trip in three hours. How's that for a girl? It ain't bad. A thousand times I've told you to keep away from them rains. You're supposed to be running the Eldorado house, not go gallivanting around endangering the lives of paying passengers. It's a lucky thing I was there to do it. That driver you're so proud of is in jail with a couple of gallon of white mule in him. Well, if I catch you on that box again, I'm going to take a willow switch here. Dang it if I don't. Get those coaches down at the bound and get fresh teams on them. We've got schedules to make around here. Did you miss me, Jeff? About as much as I could in 12 hours. Oh, I'll bet you did. Well, I wasn't missing you none, either. Ain't he elegant? He wanted to ride up on the box with me, but couldn't get the shotgun guard to ride behind. Well, maybe you're lucky at that. Gabby says the shotgun guard's better than a passenger any day. Well, so long, Joe. I gotta seek Hank about something. Jeff ain't got no time for gals. Not a driver like him. I knew if I went away, you'd forget to wash them. You run and do it right this minute, and with soap. There you go, taking it out on me again. When I get big, Jeff and me are gonna move this stage line to the North Pole where there ain't no women at all. <laughs> it sounds just like those two. And I suppose if Jeff marries anyone, it'll be an Eskimo. You ain't hankering to marry Jeff, are you, Joe? Why not? People have told me I'd look mighty nice in a wedding dress, and they weren't blind, either. Yeah. I've only had four wives, and two of them were squaws. So I don't suppose I'm no expert, but maybe that's your trouble. You don't dress up enough. I got a simply elegant new dress. You think it'd work? Maybe. Jeff sure likes a fancy saddle on a horse. By glory, I'll do it right now. I'll show him. <laughs> Listen to this. Number seven, Bears Cloth in Nevada City. 90 passengers for the month. Off born half. Number 13, Ducks Flat to Coderville. Express off nearly 50%. And all the work of Mark Benton's outlaws. Here's one from someone in Uniontown. I'm holding you responsible for the theft of my gold teeth. Value $150. I can't eat and I've lost 10 pounds. I figure anybody's worth $15 a pound, so I'm billing you for $150 additional. Total $300. Please remit. After the race, I met Mark Benton, Hank. I figure maybe we're wrong about him. Wrong about him? Of course we've been wrong about him. We ought to shot him months ago. I wouldn't trust a railroader an inch or anyone who speaks up for him. And that means you. What's it to you, anyway? Plenty. Chick's dad was like a father to me. And I owe it to him to look after Chick, and the same goes for Joe. They own half of this company. And if you go fighting a railroad without any proof, you'll end up ruined. And the stage line, too. Well, I don't need to stand by and see that happen. Oh, so you're looking after Joe and Chick, are you? What do you think I'm doing? We're going to fight Mark Benton tooth and nail. And if you don't like it, you're fired. You're fired as of, of uh, uh, 1.23 p.m. Stopped. Dang it, why don't they make a watch that'll run? Miss Joe, you sure look fancy. Doggone, that's perfume, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Reminds me of my girl back in Ohio. She was wearing perfume the day she married that drummer from Chicago. Oh, Jeff. Hello, Joe. Don't you notice anything? You are looking kind of pale. I hope you're feeling all right. Jeff, you're the blindest man in Nevada City. Can't you see this is the prettiest dress this side of Paris? It's mighty pretty, all right. What you wearing it for? You can be sure I'm not wearing it for you, Jeff Connor. That gentleman yonder invited me to the matinee at the new opera house this afternoon. And I'm mighty pleased to be going. Well, that's fine, Joe. I reckon I won't be seeing you for a while. I'm going on a vacation. Vacation? But you're supposed to take number four out this afternoon. Not this afternoon or any other afternoon. Hank just fired me. Fired you? Where are you going, Miss Joe? To take this dress off. I thought you was wearing it to the matinee this afternoon. 
No, not this afternoon or any other afternoon. Say, if you'd like to wear that, I'll go to the show with you. Oh, I didn't mean you to hear me. Glad I did. How about it? All right, I guess. Oh, I mean, thank you very much. It's all right, lady. I never miss. Well, you're coming in, or ain't you? My name's Jim Trevor, Mr. Liddell. I couldn't help hearing you fighting with your driver. And what you were saying about the railroad. Yeah, well, what's it to you? It's plenty. You're not the only one that's been pushed around by the California Central. That railroad ruined me. Feed me out lock, stock, and barrel. It did? <laughs> Sit down. Have a cigar. Thanks. I had a nice freighting business down Sacramento way. The minute Mark Benton had his track laid, he burned my wagon, shot my horses, scared off my customers. He did? It sounds like him, the skunk. What'd you do? Nothing. I'm a gentleman. I thought I was dealing with a gentleman until it was too late. But now I aim to start fighting. With your help, I can wreck the California Central the same way they wrecked me. What do you say? Say? Hey, do you like cigars? Hey, take, a, take a handful of them. Fill your pockets up with them. Bad enough losing Jeff. But I don't see why you have to go too, Gabby. It's a free country, ain't it? Jeff entitled to his opinion, ain't he? But you've been ranting about the railroad something awful, Gabby. Who, me? You do imagine the blamedest things, Chick. We'll be seeing you, Chick. Gabby and I is going to try to get a job around close somewhere. This is going to be mighty disappointed at you leaving, Jeff. She's kind of sweet on you, you know. And I was just thinking, you know how I feel about gals. But if Mary and Sis would keep you around here, well, I'd agree to it. Well, thanks, Chick, but you're all wrong about Joe. All she thinks about is driving stage coaches and jumping horses over fences. Oh, what do you know about Joe? Can't even tell a new dress from a fancy saddle. Now she's going to the Opry with that dude from the city. Stand still, will you? I ain't talking to you. We'll be seeing you, Chick. Don't worry. The loss of one payroll is not going to break California Central. You'll have to wait a while for your money, that's all. Yeah, well, that's what you said. You want the money? Yeah. How do we know you ain't busted already? How do we know you didn't frame this robbery just to beat us out of our money? We want our money now. Yeah, anyone can frame a robbery. Anybody that could think a thing like that don't belong here. You'll get your money. I'll pay off out of my own pocket. Give it Come it. on. Come on, give me my Take it. With this. Give it. Get out. I can't have loyal men. I don't want any. Anyone else want to quit? China boy, no one understands very well. But we all stay by Mark Benton. You bet we all stay yeah. by. Let's go back to work. Thanks, boys. <laughs> I wonder if we're better eat a meal around here, free. Maybe. Hello, boy. How are you? What are you doing here? Looking for a meal. What's the matter? I thought you were working for Liddell. Not since we asked him to come and talk to you. Liddell must have a hotter temper than I've heard. I won't forget that you lost your job on my account. Yeah. This ought to prove to you you weren't speaking up for a liar. Black boy. Mark Benton's iron horse is a die. Someone stabbed it right through the heart. Mark Benton sits all day and cries his heart away, and the man who's to blame is Black Bart. Mark Benton's iron horse is a dying. Someone stabbed it right through the heart. But who else wants to see the iron monster rust? Who but the man Mark Benton tried to bust? P.S. Dear Mark Benton, if you like this verse, you can sing it to the tune of Stars Over the Prairie. Any time that I sing it, it'll be at his funeral. Keep quiet about this. I ain't showing this to anybody yet. There's something in it that I don't quite understand. You mean the part about who else wants to see the Iron Monster rust? Who could it mean but Hank Liddell? He's the only man around here that blames me for his troubles. But Hank wouldn't tie himself in with Black Bart. Well, it doesn't seem possible. After all that Black Bart has done to the stage line. Come here. I want to show you something. I'm short an engineer and a fireman. How about it? That? 
You don't want us to run that sway back coffee pot on wheels, do you? Anybody that can beat the train with a team can certainly learn to reverse the process. Hey, you ain't going on there. I'd kind of like to see what makes it go. Horsepower. This engine is rated at 900 horsepower. 900 horsepower? Listen, mister, you ain't talking to no children. Why, we just beat the pants off it with six horses. It may look complicated, but it's a lot simpler than handling the reins on a six-up. Yeah. And if there's 900 Shetland ponies in that darn thing, I'm a railroad man myself. <laughs> 900 ghosts is more like it. Look at him. Business is sure good since Black Bart's quit passing us and started in on the railroad. By the way, I got some bad news for you. Guess where I just seen your pal Jeff Connor? Where? He, he ain't hurt, is he? Worse than that, he's running one of them engines. A regular grease monkey. Would you believe a fella like that could sink that low? I don't believe it. Still, it's the truth. I seen him with my own eyes, and Gabby was with him. I still don't believe it. I'll prove it ain't so. I'll settle up my pony and ride to the rail hand. Better not, son. I'm still telling you the truth. Get up, Jack. Jim gonna say hello? No, I ain't gonna say hello. I ain't gonna say nothing. Uncle Hank was right. I'm glad he fired you. We've been pals for a long time, Chick. You can't act this way. Gabby and I wanted to stay close to you and Joe, and this was the only job we could find. You still didn't have to take a job like this. Well, now that Black Bart's robbing the railroad, doesn't that prove to you that Benton wasn't backing him against us? Maybe. I reckon so. I guess I didn't think about that. Well, that's all right. You know, I'm still figuring on being general manager of Morrison Liddell. You gonna back me? Sure. Say, Chick, where'd you get all this money? Oh, you know that feller's always hanging around, sis. He gave it to me. You mean that dude that she said she was going to the opera house with? It's worse than that. He's always making up poetry about how blue her eyes are and how golden her hair is. It's just something awful. Making up poetry? Sis seems to like it, too. If you've changed your mind about going to the North Pole, you better come see her quick. I reckon you're right, Chick. I think I'll do that. Whenever stars drift over the prairie, thoughts of you drift into my heart. Throughout the dark of night, I seem to hold you tight, and you promise that we'll never part. Whenever stars Mark Benton's iron horse is a dying. Someone stabbed it right through the heart. Mark Benton sits all day and cries his heart away. And the man who's to blame is Black Bart. Mark Benton's iron horse is a dying. Someone stabbed it right through. The Iron Monster Rust Who but the man Mark Benton tried to bust 
Would you like to dance? Mm -hmm. Play a waltz. So you got a rise out of him, eh? When he heard that jingle, he looked like he'd seen a ghost. Then he's black Bart just as sure as we're standing here. Now all I got to do is find out what he's doing here. Sorry, mister, but cutting in's a custom around here. I never expected to find myself dancing with a railroad man. I never expected I'd ever have to take you away from a fellow like that. And what's wrong with him? Just because he dresses better than some people I know and doesn't treat a girl as if she was a child. That's not what I'm talking about. What's he doing here besides talking poetry to you? Well, at least he doesn't work for the railroad. Whatever he does, he, he's working for us, not against us. He and Hank are in some sort of business together. It's just what I was afraid of. feelings, mister. Trevor's in with Hank, all right. Joe just told me. Then he's only one thing to do. Get rid of that critter before he drags Hank into real trouble. You can't go in there and shoot a man just because you think he's black, Bart. I'm all for shooting him now and finding out later. We'll trail him till we know who he is. Mark Benton to get himself a new crew. Is Trevor still here? He rode out that way about ten minutes ago. He's sure a funny fella. His mom's dying, and he's pleased as punch about it. He's a dad burned reptile, that's what he is. Hey, how you know about his mother? Old oh, man Wills from the telegraph office had a message for him and gave it to me to deliver. Didn't I tell you never to read other people's mail? What did it say? It said mother expected to die tonight. And then I Trevor reads it and grins and then rode away. Say, Chick, you're gonna be a detective yet. Come on, Gabby. If you need me, I'll be down at the stables. My pony's sick. What's the matter, Gabby? Ah, uh, this blamed animal's picked up a rock. Sometimes I think he goes around looking for rocks every time he gets tired. No, we'd never caught up with Trevor anyway. But he must be heading for the railroad. If he has a gang of his men hiding in these hills, it might be Benton's payroll instead of somebody's mother that's due to pass away tonight. Why in Sam Hill don't he say what he means in the telegram? We'll see. Anderson, you keep the horses out of sight here, but be ready to bring them in a hurry. Kramer, you and Buller take care of the engine crew. The rest of you come with me. down and take a look. You mean a foot? You know human beings want made to walk. But they're sure to hear us if we don't. Well, they can't hear us anyway if they ain't there. And this don't look like no mother's bedside to me. Jump in, gee, 
Yeah, that's a bad thing. Hank Liddell's horses. Yes, and every last one of them's wearing his brand. Trevor's Black Bart, all right, and we've got to get him. And before he gets a payroll, come on. Don't you worry. He won't get no payroll. Not so long as I got Roaring Lightly in my hand. It's Black Bart we want. Yeah, my hunch was right, Mr. Benton. I knew if they was gonna stick up the payroll, they'd do it here. Be ready as soon as the train comes in. What in tarnation's going on here? Must be a trap to catch Black Bart. Didn't I tell you ain't nobody gonna catch him but me and Roaring Lizy here? I know, but Hank Liddell's mixed up in this. We've gotta make sure. Let's go. They're bored from the outside. Get your horses. Come on, we can get out this way. The horses are only chance to catch him. You, get the guns. Daly, take half the men. Get the horses and start after the others. You're obviously working for Black Bart, Liddell, or both. A few days starving in jail may persuade him to talk. Can they lock him up? You know what to do with the keys. Come on. Come on. You never starve anything out of those two. If you don't, we'll never catch up with the rest of them. I've got another idea. I can't see nothing but Nevada City, and I've seen that before. Now, as soon as you sober up, We'll give you six months for damaging railroad property. You fellas live here? Yeah. Nice, ain't it? How much rent do you pay? Hey, do you know any tricks? Sure, that's how we got in here. Well, I got one I bet you can do. Yeah, wait a minute. Now, you take a hold of the end of that rope. Ready? And then don't go away, don't go away. I'll do it this time, here. Now. Give me that. I'll show you a trick. It is a trick. before we go on. It's too risky. Somebody might recognize you. We're lucky to have fresh horses to saddle after that run Benton's men gave us. Hurry up and get those saddles changed.
Can you tell me where I can find Jim Trevor? He's usually hanging around here. Mighty pretty gal runs this place. That sounds like him, all right. He ain't in there, but I know where you can find him. Oh, you do? Well, where is he? Down the street at the stables. Have my bags put inside, will you? Thanks. He's hoodooed. I'd just as soon try to rope a mosquito on a dark night. Hello, Bart. What are you doing up here? It's time for the showdown. Benton's got to be knocked out now before it's too late. I've just found out the government will give him a subsidy if he can cut a grade through the mountain. Why, that'll take him a year. Not to get his subsidy. All he has to do is lay track as far as Nugget Creek by next week. But he's never going to do it. i found a way to stop him. Come on, we can talk better over a drink. How have you been doing with Liddell? <laughs> he's in too deep to get out and doesn't know... That's it. fine. His stage line will make a good feeder for the railroad. Evelyn Liddell, meet Mr. Norton. He's up here to look over some mining property. Howdy! <laughs> Uncle Hank! Go to bed. You ought to have been there long ago. What are you up to, chick? Painting the town red with that double eagle I gave you? I gotta talk to you, Uncle Hank. It's important. That sick pony again? No, it ain't the pony. I gotta talk to you. Jim Trevor and Black Bart are the same man. The same man? Why, why, why? He can't be. He is, Uncle Hank. And he's working for that Mr. Norton there. They're after our stage line. They're aiming to break Mark Benton, too. They're fixing up the scheme right now. Well, why didn't you tell me this in the first place? What do you want to keep wasting my time for? Did you hear? Yeah, I heard all about it. I've heard enough to know that I've been the blamedest fool in history. Well, then hurry and tell him he can't do it. Tell who? Who can't do what? Mark Benton. He's got Jeff in jail. Huh? In jail? They're going to hang him for helping Black Bart. I just heard some men talking about it in the street. Gee, Hosses Pat, why do you suppose Jeff is helping Black Bart? I don't know, but he must have been doing it for us. We gotta make Mark Benton let him go. Where'd that fella Trevor go? He's up in his room with that dude. He's in number 12, ain't he? Let me try. Well, if I was a betting man, I'd bet you ten dollars you wouldn't do it. That is, if I had ten dollars. You've got to let him go. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid you'll have to find yourself a new sweetheart, Miss Whoever You Are. I know who she is, Chief. She's Morrison's daughter. He left her half interest in the stage line. The stage line again. I didn't realize I had a girl fight me. We're not fighting you. I certainly wouldn't be here to tell you if we were. I know who Black Bart is. Money. That's a lot of money for any fool. Well, I'm going to be worth that much, too. Come on, leave me to him. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to wait a while. Hey, where are you going? Hey, he's a nice feller. If it wasn't for his string, we'd be in there yet. Put these in the drawer. He's probably got some more strings. Or is that all Mark Benton gave you? I've never seen you do a mean trick like that before. No one ever made it that easy for me to break jail before. Easy? With me stringing in there all the time? Can't you see he isn't as drunk as he seems? He almost broke his neck trying to get you interested in that string. You mean Benton wanted this to escape? Sure, and you wanted him to escape with us. Thought we'd lead him to Black Bar. Hey, come on, let me out of here. Ah, uh, shut up. So you thought you had his fool, did you? Heh, <laughs> you didn't fool me none. <laughs> come on, let me out of here. And Trevor's working for a man from the city who's out to break you and Uncle Hank, too. Who is this man? I think Uncle Hank said his name was Norton. Norton? That must be Amos Norton, president of Sacramento Navigation. 
He tried to buy into California Central in the beginning. Then you let Jeff Connor out? Nothing you've said explains why he kept us from capturing Black Bart. He stays in jail. Hey, what's this you've been telling me about Jeff in jail? You better tell him that. I just saw him heading out of town with Gabby Chapman. There was another man with him, wasn't there? What are you talking about, Jeff and Gabby by themselves? Say, wait a minute. I got something important to tell you. There goes Bart now. What are you doing in there? You were supposed to go with him. I had Chapman fooled all right, but as soon as Connor got his gun, he forced me back in here. He must be Black Bart's brain. Really, I'm offering $5,000 reward for Connor, dead or alive. Get out the posters right now. Now we're getting somewhere. With that much money, every vigilante in the country will be looking for him. You can't do that. That's murder. Uh, Wait a minute, Benton. Maybe when you hear what I've got to say, you won't waste your time trying to catch Jeff. I've been helping Jim Trevor. But I didn't know he was Black Bart. Everything pointed to you, Liddell. But... The important thing is now that your railroad's about to be blown to kingdom come. Norton's having Black Bart blow up the Three Pines Tunnel when the morning train comes through. How do you know? Ain't I got ways of finding out things in my own hotel? Where'd they get that much powder? Well, they could steal it from any mine around here. That train's got a carload of powder on it itself. If their blast sets that off, you won't get that tunnel repaired in a year. And I've only got a week. Well, how about opening this door? Hey, hey, let me out of here. Hey, you can't do this to me! Let me out of here! use they've cut the wires. We've only got one chance. Gather some men and get to the tunnel first. Liddell, this proves you've been telling the truth. We're in this together. Are you going to help me? Well, I'd be a darn fool to help a competitor. But that's just what I'm going to do. We can get to that tunnel a heap faster cutting the cross country on my horses than we can on one of them tea kettles of yours. So let's go. Don't see why a man can't have some breakfast. Me, I hate riding on an empty stomach. Don't worry. After this job, you'll have so much money you've eaten breakfast in bed. They're going to blow up the train at Three Pines Tunnel. We'll have to stop it before it gets there. We'll double back and cut across the foothills. If we go this way, they'll spot us sure. Sure to have those spare horses at the tunnel in time. We'd be wanting to make a getaway. Don't worry, boss. I guess you won't be leaving no poetry this time, huh? <laughs> You come with me. You're right here, Anderson. Have a keg open and a fuel set by the time I reach the tunnel. They've already planted the powder under the tracks inside. Let's take a look. Hold it! You won't find any powder in there. It's coming in by fast break. All right, boys, get the hardware. I wouldn't try it, ma'am, if I were you. I couldn't miss you if I tried. Linton's crew's a bullheaded bunch, but this ought to stop them. Somebody's built a fire on the tracks. 
They must have found out something. You hurt bad, Gabby? No, oh, not bad. Get going, son. You beat that train of four, and by cracky, you can do it again. train until you're sure the powder car is in a tunnel. I'm going back with Anderson to make sure that nothing goes wrong with the blast. And keep an eye on our friend here. shots mean? I don't know, but I'm gonna find out. She's liable to blow any minute. It's a cinch it won't blow till Bart comes out. I hope he goes flying up through the top like a bird. Hey, Bart, what happened to the explosion? There's your explosion. Too bad it didn't make more noise. Go on. All right, boys. Drop your guns. Let's get their guns. in his room? Just one up. This hotel's dropping the guest. No, leave me alone. I ain't had so much fuss made over me since the mule kicked my teeth out. Can I sing a song to you, Gabby? Ah, go away, will you? <laughs> I'm taking him down to the annex, the one that Jeff and Gabby just left. Good idea. Just to show there's no hard feeling between you and me, how about taking a ride up to the railhead? What, on that tea kettle? Don't mind if I do.
Would you like to see it? Wait a minute. Where are you going? To put on my new dress. <laughs>